Okay, here we are, Wednesday, and aloha, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and this is a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So I'm really pleased to have two of my friends as our guests, uh, uh, Peter Sternlich again, uh, and uh, Noel uh, Marin from Sustainable Energy Hawaii. And we're gonna be talking story today about Spaceship Earth. And uh, last week we talked about uh, problems and today we're gonna to be talking about solutions. So um, to kick it off, I'd like uh, Noel to tell us a little bit about Sustainable Energy Hawaii. Thank, uh, thank you, Mitch. By the way, it's Marin. Thank you very okay. much for uh, having us again here. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, to be part of uh, your your uh, your program uh, in the past, and uh, glad we're here again. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, Sustainable Energy Hawaii. We're a uh, local organization that is advocating for affordable, clean, renewable energy for uh, Hawaii Island. And um, I'm also happy that uh, a fellow board member, uh, Peter, is is with us today. Uh, if we go, if we can go to slide one, I can quickly socialize our um, our mission. And uh, essentially, our end in mind is sustainably produced energy, utilizing our abundant renewable resources here on the island. And what we do is we're, we're striving to utilize this to improve the quality of life for our people, for our residents here, and uh, uh, not just. In the in the in the current, but also in, for future generations, and uh, we believe that the benefit will come in the form of affordable energy, uh, that as you know will affect almost every facet of life here. Uh, this will also enable the creation of a green hydrogen economy and all the downstream products. Uh, you know, we talk about ammonia, well, hydrogen, ammonia, aviation fuels, etc., and um, uh, these will play a critical role for difficult use cases that we have. You know, to deal with not just here but abroad. Uh, uh, examples are, you know, transoceanic marine and air transport, and even grid, grid storage. So um, uh, we're we're all about facilitating this change here on Hawaii Island. Working, of course, with many many different organizations and leaders to facilitate the change. Um, so tell us a little bit about your membership. Who who are these? Uh, who are your members? What kind of a cross section do we have there? So our uh, leadership is comprised of a number of individuals. And while well, I say leadership, but also um, uh, the, the folks that we collaborate with are HUI. So we have folks from the university, um, Dr. Thomas, uh, Dr. Lautzi. We have folks from the government. Um, we frequently engage with the, the county, uh, county officials. Uh, on the board, we have people who are uh, uh, Native Hawaiian leaders. Uh, we have... Um, the folks in the energy space, um, Stan Osterman. We have a number of individuals that represent many different facets of um, community, not just energy. And uh, we recognize that this is a really important um, uh, important uh, thing to have because as we go through this journey, it's going to be really important for us to um, to do so in a way that's embraced by many different levels of uh, different sectors of community. Uh, Peter, uh, feel free to add. Yeah, Peter, chime in. Yeah, I mean, the collaboration, in order to make a difference, in order to be able to successfully develop this, um, the future of this hydrogen economy, it really does require working with the entire community. So it, it's government, it is industry, and it's also, and especially the community. So mm -hmm. there needs to be a, a you know, a, a, a sense of ownership that 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 permeates through every you know the entire um, you know array of people that live on this island. Yeah, I've actually had the honor or the privilege of sitting in on some of your meetings, and you have a really a real wealth of uh, talent on the uh, in the organization with uh, really good ideas and uh, you know, other thinkers, and uh, they're working on solutions. So, talking about problems um, on spaceship earth uh we uh on our last meeting uh you led off uh, peter and talked about the challenges uh that we have on spaceship earth uh, we don't have a uh plant planet b so why don't you uh just catch us up on that first episode when we talked about we we defined what the problem was 
and now we're going to talk about solutions, but tell us about the problem. Sure. So the Cliff Notes version of this is essentially that our species has entered into a uh, a space where we can where we can say that we have we're, we're in a, a condition of overshoot. There's too many people for the amount of resources that we have here on this planet. We're consuming them at a massive rate. We, I mean, just in the last hundred years, we've added six billion people to the planet, yeah. all of whom want to live really, really nicely and well. Um, so we're really at a, at a point where, and I, and I saw in a question that I, I think went out to the audience, where we need to be mindful of what we're consuming because we live on a finite planet and, um, and, and what we take for granted today is, is finite. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be available at either the, the quantities or at the, at the prices that we've grown to be accustomed to. Yeah, in the uh, last uh, show, you talked about uh, how we're an extractive um, economy rather than mm -hmm. a uh, sustainable economy. Give us a few uh, of your ideas on that. Well, I think it's really important to, to define the concept of sustainability. Sustainability is being able to, to create systems, whole systems that can, that can, that are efficient, that can work today, that can satisfy our needs today, but will also be available to be used in the future. And that's a distinctly different thing than renewable energy, because there you're just talking about the energy. So sustainability is a full system view of how we're going to utilize these renewable sources of energy. Yeah, we're kind of a throwaway economy. I mean, I get stuff all the time that's single use and I push it out. So we're basically using the earth as a garbage dump, uh, both uh, our land, our landfills and everything like that. We don't recycle very much. And also our atmosphere is a dump for CO2 and all the harmful emissions we pump in. And, uh, you know, basically you can only take so much before it's mm -hmm. overloaded. So we've got to change the, uh, change the paradigm here and have a paradigm shift. And so it starts off with changing the culture. Um, so um, one of the solutions, of course, is, ener is uh, becoming more efficient on the energy side. And also, uh, as you pointed out when we were planning for the show, uh, hand in hand with uh, efficiency is conservation. Uh, we have to be conservative and not, you know, store things for a rainy day. So let's pull up the next slide and and talk about efficiency. And Noel, how would you um, could you please take the lead on uh, defining uh, efficiency and what it really means? Yeah. So, um, well, the the first first things first. It's actually the cheapest energy solution, right? And it's not as sexy as, as things like clean fuels and renewable energy and geothermal and all these different things that are really, really important. Uh, and, uh, but it's not as sexy. So it's uh, for, um, often overlooked and underutilized, underappreciated. And uh, this is really important, uh, un unfortunate actually, uh, because it represents a very important step in our journey to a clean, clean energy future. And, uh, and it's also a very easy first step. And, um, you know, when it, 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 I guess importantly, if we don't first focus on efficiency and maximizing the, um, you know, the, the, the efficiency of a process, meaning find ways to maximize energy utilization, minimize waste, et cetera, we actually risk optimizing the wrong things. And uh, that is going to result in unnecessary cost, right? And in consequences that we obviously want to avoid. There is this idiom, um, uh, waste not, want not. And uh, it's really powerful because it suggests that we have the opportunity to reduce the scope of uh, our transition to a clean energy future by reducing the need uh, for, for it, energy, to, in the first place, right? Um, so um, this means that it'll help us achieve um, our goals more aggressively, meaning we can compress the time frame uh, and also deal with less resources. So... Um, so that's the opportunity. If we if we go to slide three, um, you know we, I hope we can see that there. Yeah. So uh, th there are these uh, interesting, you know. I guess the interesting thing about um, about efficiency is that it applies to most everything in our 
economy, in our society. Anything that consumes energy, anything that requires energy to produce or operate is a candidate for energy efficiency measures. We see that in our homes, in our buildings, in transportation, in the stuff we consume, we buy. And um, as we dive into each of the details, uh, the details for this, we'll start to see the opportunities that we have to optimize. And if we go to the next slide, um, uh, there are a few things that I've, I've, I've uh, jotted down here. I'm pretty sure I may have missed a few things, but I think these are worthy of conversation. I think the very first one is, um, is um, what uh, Peter, you had, had mentioned earlier or suggested earlier. So uh, the first one is behavior modification. And this is a really interesting one, but it's also because it's it's uh, very impactful, but it's also very difficult to change, right? Or yeah. to effect because we're dealing with habits. We're dealing with uh, people having done things, you know, a, a certain way for a long period of time. We have organizations that have operated a you know a, a certain way for a long period of time, and changing the behaviors means changing the habits that have been formed by individuals and organizations. And it could be as simple as, you know, making sure you turn off the, you know, the lights when you leave the room to, uh, you know, checking the tire pressure for your, you know, your cars uh, to, you know, driving more um, uh, calmly, uh, you know, all these different things, they're really small, and but yeah. they're driven by habit. And if you change them, it can actually affect a lot of e efficiency and savings. So that would be one area. The other one that we really talk about a lot is technology. And this is obviously a very important part. And we're, we're seeing constant innovation in many different areas here. We're seeing this in household appliances, uh, in HVACs, in heating, in vehicles, and more. And the idea is that uh, as technology evolves, you have um, devices that are becoming more and more frugal in terms of the energy inputs that are required for, they, for them to operate. And the and the the challenge is making sure that the uh, consumers, individuals, and and huge entities are aware of these. And fortunately, um, we are aware because there's a lot of big focus on this, right? We have a lot of incentives, things like that. The other one is mode shifting. I call this. This is where we shift to a solution that may not be really apparent. You know, um, a, a good one is instead of just optimizing the vehicles, the personal vehicles, you know, making them more efficient, we may actually say. You know, maybe we can do without a personal car, right? We shift to right. we shift to mass transit. We shift to multimodal transport. We shift to, uh, um, you know, micro mobility, right? Um, electric uh, bicycles and so on and so forth. This mode shift is also also represents a big opportunity for us because sometimes the solutions that we end up doing are going to be very efficient, more efficient than what we're currently using today, even if that, whatever that is, like a, a car is shipped, is changed to an electric car, for example, it's still more efficient to move into the other modes of transport. And then, yeah, uh, so, couple, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to comment on uh, mindfulness because you have to actually think about what you're doing all the time. In fact, there was a previous show on Think Tech Hawaii uh, all about mindfulness. And, uh, you know, it really uh, struck home to me that, you know, we go through the day, we don't think about what, what the heck we're doing, where we are. Um, and uh, on the energy side, we should be thinking about what we're doing. It's like you say, we're, we just do it because it's been habit for all these years. And like you say, should I use my car or can I take the bus? But in mm -hmm. order to do that, apart from having personal mindfulness, we have to have like systemic mindfulness, including our infrastructure has to be mindfully yes. created so that your first choice is always going to be public transportation. They use that as an example. And uh, as long as the bus is easy and I don't have to stand in the rain and it shows up on time and I can operate my cell phone on it and, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, get onto the internet yada, 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 I'm going to use it. Now, I lived in England for uh, two years, uh, well, a year in London, uh, right downtown. I, w I went to a postgraduate school there, and I didn't have a car, but the uh, the transportation grid was so good there, I could walk to a tube station. It was only like a 10-minute walk and get on the tube and go somewhere else and go all over London without ever needing a car for a whole year. It was uh, It was kind of interesting. Um, and going through that experience. So Peter, uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, we talked about both uh, personal mindfulness and systematic, systemic mindfulness, like getting our political class mindful. 
Yeah, and just to kind of um, just kind of cap off the last topic that you were talking about in terms of mass mass transit, yeah. it, it it it's also a cultural thing. It's 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 a it's a mindset and a mindfulness that that an entire community has. It's normal to do that in certain places. Right. So for us, we I mean, it's gonna it change is hard for people. Um, so we, we've got our work cut out for us. Um, what was your question that you had just yeah, mentioned? I wanted to talk, I, I wanted to shift from just being personally mindful to being systemic oh, right. mindful. So well, that the, so that the people that build these systems are mindful about what we're trying to actually do. Like, I mean, like we're doing now on the big island, I got to say the mass transit agency and the county are really thinking this through uh, about what, what do people want? What do they need? As mm -hmm. opposed to just assuming what they need and not even talking to them about what they need. And then you build a system that nobody uses. So how, how uh, inefficient is that if you have a bus that drives around with a driver and everything else like that, it's maintained and nobody gets on it because it's either late or uh, you know, it's uh, it's not on. It, it it doesn't have the amenities you want to be able to use. No, well, or, or 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 it's a um, you know, it's we're trying to implement a change within a system, a community in this case that is not optimized for it, right? And that's one of exactly. the one of the points that I have on the slide, which is a careful planning of communities. So in the situation that we talked about, you you just raised with the uh, Hawaii Island. Uh, the uh, mass transit folks are looking at things like first and last mile, right? So how do yep. people get to the bus stop? Now, if if there isn't a solution for that, they may as well just get in a car and drive to where they need to go, right? <laughs> exactly. And when they uh, reach the terminus of their, you know, of the mass trans, you know, the bus ride, they need to figure out how to get from that bus stop to where they need to go, right? So there's right. this first mile and last mile solution that needs to be part of it. But the the, the more important thing, and I think it's part of, uh, it makes this challenge, um, especially an important one for, for the US in general, is that we've built our society around the personal car, right? You've got, yes. the, you've got the job centers, you've got the burbs out here where people have to commute. You've got essentially a society that has been built around the personal car. And right. um, as we move forward, we can change that. So if new communities and cities and towns and, you know, even just a, um, a development is created and um, the developers look into what will the community members there need to be able to maximize their, you know, reduce their need for transportation, then they'll talk about, okay, we need shopping, you need, we need healthcare, you know, we right. need uh, government services. And if that's all self-contained or even just, you know, co-located, minimizing the need to travel, then you you can utilize shared mobility. You can utilize mass transit. So there's this thing about developing with that end in mind, and trying to change our systems without looking at the overall system, and also affecting change in the overall system is going to make it really hard to move forward. Um, so anyway, that was my thought about the uh, the system dimension to it. Wow. And there's there's one one other thing, Mitch, I want to raise, and that is this area around waste you know we talked about you you raised this earlier we're in a, a society where uh there is uh where products are designed to fail right, right. <laughs> there, there's like this planned obsolescence with a product you buy it and it's expected expected to last only so long and then it's going to be fail it's going to fail and then you're going to have to buy another one so we've got to change that so there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of how to make products last how to make them repairable how to ensure there's upcycling and recycling and reuse. And uh, the same thing goes for food. There's a lot of food waste that occurs today. A lot of energy that goes into producing food, a lot of energy that goes into throwing away and disposing of food. We should be able to make, you know, minimize that as well. So it's everywhere. It's food, it's yeah. hard goods, it's soft goods, it's transportation. There's so much opportunity in this space of uh, efficiency. Yeah, well, so looking at it in my own personal life is I was looking at my uh, bottle of uh, olive oil and it was a massive glass bottle and it was a beautiful bottle. And uh, and when it was empty, I said, Jesus, a real shame just to throw this, pitch it out in the garbage. And, and the amount of energy that goes into making glass is enormous. Yeah. So I yeah. thought, well, how can I use this? And I thought, well, you know what? That would look like a nice wine bottle. 
And so I repurposed it and I bought, I bought a box of wine instead of bottles of wine. So right away I'm saving on glass. And I decanted like four of these bottles uh, out of this one box you get from Costco, a box of wine. So like a box of wine, if you took it as a guest, would seem really tacky. Like, oh, gee, it's bringing me box wine and not a bottle. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I'm a screw cap, no less, you know. Whereas, <laughs> nothing but the best. <laughs> uh, nothing you but know, the best, it, but... but there's 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 a fundamental problem to achieving that end, which and I and I know how I I mean it's I mean you hit hit the nail on the head. We have an economic system that incentivizes a a uh, a, a throwaway society because shareholders are constantly going more 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 profit 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 grow 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 grow, grow. and it, I mean for instance my my wife's father. We finally got him to get a new refrigerator after the one he had had for 50 years. Wow. Yeah. You know, was it still worked, but it was consuming so much electricity and the efficiencies. But he had a refrigerator for 50 years. And he, he just, I, I don't need a new, I, I've got one that works. And he mm -hmm. still was using the same, you know, appliances that belonged to his mother. And this was when he was in his 70s. So they used to make things that way. And quality was an issue. Now price has become the over money has become the over anyhow. It, I mean, we can do five shows on this, but there's, there is a cultural thing that needs to change so mm -hmm. that these things that you're talking about, Noel, can be easier to do and can be become socially more acceptable. So... Yeah, that's my well, two look, sets. Look at the way look at the way we work. Okay. Now this COVID thing was awful. No question about it. But it's changed our whole way we do work. Yes. So instead of having to commute to the office, A, you have to have the car, and you gotta fill it up with gas, and you gotta drive and take an, an hour one way, or depending on how far away you are, and then park it and all that kind of stuff. Heck, you can get up, have your cup of coffee, and you can be on task. Assuming you have the right kind of a job, mm -hmm. you know, right? Um, and uh, it, you're far more efficient. I mean, I've only been in the office like three or four days in the last two years, and I'm getting a heck of a lot more work done uh, working from home because I have exactly the same setup in my office at work, except I don't have windows and I don't have a refrigerator. <laughs> the refrigerator was not a good thing because it was too easy to go and have, you know, snacks all the time. So I, I put on the COVID-19, which now I'm trying desperately to lose. But, but look how it's changed uh, the whole way we operate. So like yeah. some organizations said, oh, you got, you got all to come back. And people were revolting against it. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's the point? And uh, yeah. I even heard that uh, some companies were docking people pay because they said, well, now that you're not coming into the office, we don't have to pay you as much because we don't have to cover your commuting expenses and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's really yeah. it's really changed everything. And okay, so how do we support that? I mean, maybe that's a good thing for people in the knowledge industry, you know, not necessarily like in the university environment. I mean, guys still have their labs and they still have to go and do their experiments. They can't do that from home, so they have to go in. Um, but other people don't have to do that. And, you know, you know, they're using their computers and all this kind of stuff. So what we have to have to help that out on the systemic approach, systemic mind, mindfulness, is we have to put in a, 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 a awesome communication system. So like yeah. if you're living out in some of the, the burbs on the big island, you know, in the outlying uh, subdivisions, you have like wonderful uh, internet access. Like during COVID, the kids had allows, uh, you know, I, maybe I'm overstating it, but in some of the areas they had terrible uh, internet connections. In fact, they didn't have them. And I know Sustainable mm -hmm. Energy Hawaii took the lead on trying to build little satellite um, Wi-Fi spots or hotspots in these local communities. Okay, so we learned from that, I hope. So let's get in there and yeah. build a Rolls-Royce communication system so that maybe our kids don't have to go to school every day. You know, they can do their homework online or whatever, or their or their parents don't have to go, you know, drive 50 yeah. miles and uh, to get to work and back because and, they can do the job. 
it's not about where you are. Yeah. What's the job I have to do? What do I have to accomplish? And what's the most efficient way I can do that? What do you guys have to say about that? I, yes. I, I got a prompt that we have three yes. minutes left. So. <laughs> oh, really? I, oh. Yes. Two now. I, I, I just want to say, just to tag on to that, because what you just described is so critical. And the last slide I had was just talking about two general areas. And a big area is uh, education. Right. right. Uh, especially the things that are behavioral in nature. If people know that if they do X, they're going to save Y, it's going to be a motivation, especially this in this time. Right. Uh, where, you know, um, uh, mm -hmm. e e economics are really critical. So there's a lot of education that we need to do. And that's a big part of it. And then the other area, I know we're out of time here. The other area is policy. There are certain things that we can do to affect uh, you know, the changes that need to happen in the form of incentives, in the form of requirements that force you know, uh, buildings to be more efficient, that sort of thing. So those are, you know, I'm sure there are other other things out there that we need to talk through, but I want to emphasize the importance of um, awareness and education, you know, so that well, we can have mild, mindfulness. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's exactly what the follow-on episodes of uh, th this uh, series of shows is going to be, you know, planet Earth here, a uh, spaceship Earth uh, and we're going to be talking at all the various different areas we can be uh, more energy efficient and um, and what we can actually do as an individual and systemic, what we want our politicos to do. So actually, we have uh, two slides left to go. I'm going to give my little pitch I like to give all the time, which is uh, our world is fragile. Our future energy needs are great. And it's time for those of political power and financial strength, we've got a lot of billionaires on the big island that make a difference. So all you guys who might dial in, maybe a billionaire is not going to dial into our little show, but uh, get out there and make a difference and do something. Uh, so we'll come up to the next slide is how we can talk to Sustainable Energy Hawaii. And there's their website or uh, your uh, connection uh, to their link to their website. And also, of course, our host today, uh, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, because we're going to be out there looking at what kind of policies can we put in place to uh, make ourselves more efficient and more energy efficient uh, going forward. So last words to, I'll give some to Noel. you have anything you'd like to close up with? Yeah, yeah I just, uh, again, waste not, want not. This is the cheapest form of uh, for, uh, energy solution we have out there, and uh, it's something that we definitely must invest in. And Peter. Yeah, uh, be aware of the fact that we're that 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 our our supplies are limited. Treat them with care, and and, and realize that they're not going to necessarily be here forever at this price. So be mindful, right? Be mindful. Uh, so being yeah. mindful of our time, we're going to leave it there. You've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii, and you've been talking story about Spaceship Earth and our broken sustainability system with Peter Sternlich and Noel Moran. Marin? Marin. I got it right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sure, I just know you as Noel. <laughs> Share their insights on solutions. In our follow-on shows, we'll be discussing other solutions. So thank you, uh, Peter and Noel, for uh, joining us and helping us out with this. And I know you worked to the midnight hour last night to helping put these slides together, Noel. So thank you so much. I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge Haley and the Think Tech team who were actually up at midnight last night when I sent them the slides and they were right on it, which is really unbelievable. So thank you very much to uh, Think Tech staff. And most of all, thanks to our viewers for tuning in. And I'm Mitch Ewan. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. 
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.